The name of this tutorial is Ira Krakow's Armature Animation Blender 2.49b Tutorial. The purpose of this video is to show how armature animation works in Blender 2.49b. Understanding how to move the bones in an armature is the key to being able to rig a character. We'll first create a basic skeleton-like armature. Then I'll show you the difference between FK, forward kinematics, and IK, inverse kinematics. I like IK in particular because my initials are IK. It's also something we both have in common with the exquisitely unreadable German philosopher Immanuel Kant. Leaving the categorical imperative aside, we'll create a simple hand wave cycle and introduce the action editor and nonlinear action editor, the NLA editor, to give you an idea of how actions are defined and how they can be layered together to produce complex movement. We're concentrating on the armature only how the skeleton moves, so to speak, not the object to be rigged. Once you have an armature, say of a human moving correctly, you can then rig it to a human-like object. This is the theory behind the man candy rig. I will discuss skinning, the process of associating an armature with a character, either two-footed or four-footed or I guess any other number of footed creature in another tutorial. So let's get started. Delete the default cube we're going to create a primitive skeleton. Go to Animation View by selecting it from the View drop-down. Go to Front View, Numpad 1. Add an armature, Space Add Armature. Scale the bone up four times, S4 Enter. Look at the Outliner. Expand the Armature Outline. Note that the armature has one bone, called Bone. Tab into Edit Mode. A bone is a child object to the armature. A bone has three parts, the tip, the root, and the body. A bone can be selected in one of two ways. One way is to select the bone's body, which will also select the bone's tip and root. The other way is to right-click on the body and shift right-click on the root, which selects the body, which is in the middle, between the tip and the root. Press W for the Specials menu. Select Subdivide Multi with four cuts. Now we have five bones, which can function as a primitive spinal cord. Expanding the armature display in the outliner shows that the bones are named Bone.001, Bone.002, Bone.003, and Bone.004, parented to bone. You can also see the names in the 3D view by going to the Edit buttons, F9, and pressing the Names button. Press the Names button again to turn the names off. Now turn on X-axis mirror. This is a handy tool which lets you create mirrored bones on the x-axis. When the bones are symmetrical, using x-axis mirror means that you only need to create the bones on one side. Mirrored bones are created on the other side. Normally, to simply add a bone, you press the E key, which extrudes the bone. However, with x-axis mirror turned on, you can add mirrored bones by pressing Shift-E. If x-axis mirror is turned off, Shift-E acts like the E key, just extruding one bone. We'll also mirror extrude two legs with Shift E. Here's how it works. We're going to create two primitive arm bones on the left and the right at the same time. With the tip of the fourth bone of the spine selected, press Shift E. This creates two bones on the left and the right, which can be scaled. Press Enter when the bones are at the desired size. Select the tip of the newly created bone on the right and press Shift E again. This creates two more mirrored bones. We can create mirrored legs. Select the root of the lowest bone of the armature. Press Shift E to create two, quote, legs. Then select the tip of the bone on the lower right. Press Shift E to create two more bones for the feet. I hope you get the idea. I'll leave it to you to create fingers and hands, but for now we're, we have the basic skeletal bone structure. Let's see how bones are named. From the editing buttons in the armature panel, click on Names. Names shows you the names of the bones that were created. An easy way to see how the bones are named is by using the outliner. The original bone is called Bone. The spine bones were created with the suffix .001, .002, .003, and so on, when the big bone was subdivided. Mirrored bones, the ones created with Shift E, have an additional underscore R and underscore L depending on whether they're on the left or the right. Look at the outliner. You can see each leg is parented off the base bone. Bone. 
If you look at a detailometer such as the man candy rig, you'll see that the bones have meaningful names such as left arm, right pinky, and so on. The outliner clearly shows parent-child relationships in the armature. This is important when we start posing the armature. Now turn off names. Okay, we have a basic skeleton. Let's see how the bones move. In particular, the difference between forward kinematics, FK, and inverse kinematics, IK. Blender has a special mode called pose mode, allowing us to move bones so that the armature ends up in the position we want. We're going to create a simple arm wave, what Blender calls an action. Blender has a special mode called Pose Mode for moving armature bones. We're at frame 1. Select the two bones on the right arm, right click on the arm, then shift right click on the second bone. Press the I key and select Lock Rot, L-O-C-R-O-T. The curves don't appear in the IPO Curves Editor, although they were created. The reason you don't see the curves is that you need to go into the Pose Curves. Change the curve type from Object to Pose. A handy feature in the timeline is the red button that automatically records keyframes as you move bones around. If you don't press it, you would need to remember which bones you moved as you keyframe. This way Blender keyframes each move as you do it. Now go to frame 11 by pressing the up arrow or entering the number 11 in the current frame area. Select the arm bone and press the G key to move it up a bit. Then select the other arm bone and press the G key to move it up in a salute type position. We've actually created half of the waving action. We'll complete it now. Switch the window from the IPO editor to the action editor. Note that there are two keyframe bones, bone.003 underscore L and bone.003 underscore L.001. The diamonds indicate the keyframe. To complete the wave, select the two diamonds, they're yellow when selected and white when unselected, at frame one. You right click and shift right click the same way you do it in pretty much all the Blender windows. Then press shift D to copy. Finally drag the two diamonds to frame 21. Drag the vertical green arrow and watch the wave. Press control down arrow to maximize the action editor. Rename the action to wave from action. Press control down arrow to return the action editor to its original position. Let's see the difference between FK and IK. Select the right arm bone. Turn on the Auto IK button. Grab the arm and move it. Note how the whole skeleton except for the legs move. This is definitely not how an arm moves. It's actually more appropriate for a leg. IK actually does movement backwards to the root of the skeleton. You can change how far back IK calculates by disconnecting a bone. To show this, select the third bone, go into Edit Mode, Tab, and click the CON, which is short for connection button, which disconnects this bone. Go back into pose mode, select the arm again and move it. Note the movement stops at the disconnected bone. FK on the other hand does the movement forwards. There's one last window to see, the NLA editor. This lets you mix different types of actions. Change the window type to NLA editor. You should see the wave action. If you press the C key, while the wave action is highlighted, you're prompted to change the action to an NLA strip. Press enter. These strips can be combined, wave plus walk, hip swivel and talk and so on. And you basically just keep animating. A detailed explanation of the NLA editor is the subject of a future tutorial. So that's a brief look into the basics of animating an armature. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to Hit the YouTube subscribe button so you won't miss any of my future tutorials. Happy blendering.